today is going to be a fun day of procrastinating through color studies. Yes, I made up a word, procrastinating, and that is the time that I spend in the studio when I'm not feeling particularly creative and yet I still want to create something if that makes any sense. I'm Jackie Bernardi and welcome to my studio. So I just got back from a trip to Portugal, as many of you know, and I am very jet lagged. And I wanted to spend some time in the studio because it had been about 10 days, but I was not feeling overly creative. So I thought, well, why don't I just do a color study and see what comes up? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I do one way that I do color studies. And I learned this method of creating a color study from an artist by the name of Donna Downey. And this is a method that she uses, or it's an interpretation, I should say, of a method that she uses that I really liked. It used both sides of my brain and it's just a great way to see what you can make from just a few colors. So today I'm going to be using primary magenta, Naples yellow, sap green, Payne's gray, and of course some titanium white. And what I'm starting with is a grid. And all I've done is I've taken a ruler to my art journal and I've created approximately one inch squares uh, in this nine by 12 art journal, which gives me 11 squares down and eight squares across, which is a lot to play with. I won't use all of them, but you'll see my method as we go along. So I just start by placing some primary magenta on these two corners at the very top and then also some at the bottom. Now I'm going to be doing different things with each area of this journal. At the top, I'm just going to be mixing the colors that we're going to be using today. Just pretty much pure mix. And then I'll do a tint mix with some of the white over it a little bit. You'll see in just a moment, hang with me. Down below, what I'll be doing is creating a grid that's a range of the color study. So going from one color to another color and then tinting half of that as well so that you can get a really full spectrum view of colors that can be created in just one session, just using a couple colors. So as I go down, I've got the the primary magenta, the naple yellow, the sap green, and then I'm going to bring in the Payne's gray. And this is just a way to set up the color study from the beginning so there's some order to it. You don't have to do it this way. I just find it really relaxing to do it this way. And when I do try to follow this, I don't have to concentrate as much. It just becomes more fluid for me. So here I'm mixing some of the primary magenta with the Naples yellow, and I'm getting this really great salmon-y type color. That's up top. And then down at the bottom of the page, closer to me where I'm working, is I put that same color in the middle of the range between Naples yellow and primary magenta. And I'm going to be doing the same thing with all the colors. I'll blend the two colors, the one from the left-hand side and the one from the top where they meet. I'll blend those out. And then I will also bring that same color down to the middle of the range at the bottom of the page. I hope I'm not over explaining this. Okay, bringing in the Payne's gray. You could use black, you could use any color you want. I actually chose all of these co colors randomly. I just reached into my uh, box of paints and just grabbed some colors. Uh, I actually replaced 
the sap green, uh, I had pulled out another yellow. And in this study, I didn't want to do two yellows. I So I reached in until I found something I thought I could do something with. I've never used these colors together before. I've never blended them out in this way. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. So as you can see, oh, I made a mistake here. Uh, I just kind of lost track of myself. And in the range that went from sap green to Naples yellow, I accidentally put in the prime, the mix of the primary magenta and the sap green, which makes this like brown type color. So all I did was erase it and replace it with what should have been in there, which was the blend of the sap green with the Naples yellow. And I just erased it literally by putting some water on a shop towel and wiping it off. So you can see here, I'm starting to do the tinting. And the reason why I do this is when you see the pure colors blended, that gives you one whole concept that you could use. But when you go back and you tint the colors with some white, it gives that lighter version, maybe a more pastel version of all the same colors that you're blending, which opens up an incredible amount of opportunities for use later on. I use my art journal, my color study art journal as a reference guide a lot. I mean, I go back all the time because you forget what colors you create as you go. And if you don't have a way of recording them, whether it's in a notebook, an art journal, on scrap pieces of paper, if you don't have a way of recording them, you may forget how you made particular colors. All right, what I'm gonna do now is create a mother color, which is simply blending all four colors that I'm using to create one unifying color. This color could be used with any of these blends and help unify a piece, a series, and so on. So when you're using multiple colors, it's always a good idea to mix up a mother. And later on, you'll see how I use that. So now we've moved on to the range part of the grid. And this is where we go from one color to the other in terms of strength of color. So on this first one that I'm doing, we're going from Payne's Gray to Primary Magenta. So on the side of the range that I'm working on right now, it's primarily using the Payne's Gray, more Payne's Gray than the Primary Magenta. And as we move to the other side of the range, it becomes more of the Magenta and less of the Payne's gray. So as you can see, it's going from that dark, dark gray blue hue and going all the way to magenta. Now, it may be hard to see from these angles, uh, the color variations that are happening with the tints, and I will zoom in on that so you can see better what is happening here. When I was in college, I did a color study that required, a, not a color study, a, a range study that required us to create 100 shades of gray. Okay, this is decades before 50 shades of gray was a thing, so we can ignore that. But it was so challenging to do and at the same time so rewarding. This exercise is like a micro version of that. Now, if I had a much longer sheet of paper, I could do a hundred shades going from, now we're on the Naples yellow going over to Payne's gray. We could do a shade study of a hundred colors going from that to the other. Uh, this, we just have <laughs> space constraints. So I'm, I'm really only getting six colors across as you can see, the deeper we go into the creating the range and exploring more with the four colors that we're using, 
Some of the colors that come up in the combination and the tinting even are surprising colors. For example, when I initially laid the colors out on the page, I never even considered that we might get a khaki green out of this combination, and yet we did. Even the browns that we get out of here are surprising to me. Now here we're just going from Payne's Gray to the Sap Green. And typically blue-greens are some of my favorite colors, so we'll see what occurs here. Or maybe we went from Sap Green to Payne's Gray. It's a little bit hard to tell on, on right now, actually. Um, I, it's pretty dark. I think we did. I think we went from Payne's Gray to Sap Green here. So when I'm done with this color study, I think it'll be about 42 colors plus the, the tints uh, that we, we created. And to have that as a reference for future paintings, for future inspiration for colors to mix and match on papers or, or gift wrap or whatever you're going to do with your papers, um, this is very inspiring. Now what I'm going to be doing is this is actually part one of a three-part series and the other two videos will be coming out shortly. But in the series what I'm doing is I'm showing you how I do a color study, what I do with the colors that I create in terms of painting papers and so on. You'll see my process for that. And then the, finally the third part of the series is I will present a video to you where I actually use the painted papers that I created from this color study so that you can see how, how the process goes from start to finish. So this is just part one, which is, you know, just defining the colors that can be created out of the blend of these four initial colors and, of course, the mother color. Now there's nothing scientific about what I'm doing. I am not measuring how much paint I'm using. I'm eyeballing completely and I encourage you to eyeball as well. Um, for some, they may want a very scientific color study and I think that's awesome. It's just not my work methodology. Uh, and also, I'm pretty confident that I could get back to these same colors even years from now uh, just by playing with it a little and uh, working through until I got the same shade that I have here today. It's not meant to be prescriptive, it's actually meant to be inspirational. You know, I have links at in the description down below for all of the colors that I'm using and uh, as well as this art journal which is fantastic because it's spiral bound which means that when it's open it lays completely flat which makes everything easier and uh, it's heavy duty watercolor paper so this is a really sturdy art journal specifically for this purpose for me. I love it. It's a Stillman and Burn, and uh, again, it's linked to in the description. So what's going to happen here once we complete the range study? 
we'll pretty much be done with the grid portion of the color study. The next thing that we're going to go into is creating a piece of painted paper inside this art journal that incorporates the colors that we've just created. Now sometimes when I create these painted papers inside the journal, they're very organized or they're there's more realism than not. However, other times it's just a free for all. And what I did today was I just wanted you to feel as much freedom as possible. So I'm literally just taking this two inch um, rubber brayer and I'm rolling out the colors from where I mix them on the gel plate into this art journal so that all the colors are getting represented. And I'm mixing some of the white in so we get some of that tint. This is hilarious to watch my hand going that fast, which of course it wasn't. It's just the sped up video. And again, uh, you may have heard me say this before, but I enjoy using a gel plate as my palette for mixing colors because when I'm done, I can get some really terrific gel plate pulls just from the palette. So I always recommend that be part of your process, especially if you're doing a color study, because then you'll have built-in painted papers that you can use in other projects just from the palette. So here I'm just using the Catalyst Wedge and moving and scraping paint around I have no defined intention here. I'm just getting the paint on the paper. So it reflects the color study that's on the other side. So here's pull one. Very cool. I'm going to put that to the side. You will see these pulls in the next video. I just wanted to show you in this video how I got them. And the final thing I do is I go back in with pencil and I write in what colors I used because believe me, a week from now, I won't remember. And so I just try to record at least the first layout of the colors so that I don't forget. And that's it. That's how I do a color study.